85 Dodge Ram Charger, Dana 44 front uh, axle. Um, we got some work to do. We replaced the caliper, We're gonna replace the brake holes, pads, uh, repack the bearings inside here. First thing we're gonna do is take off the brake line. And I just uh, take a screwdriver here. And on the back side, I'm gonna pound up a clip here. Okay, just to show you how this brake came apart when I originally shot the uh, video I had on, a, on the tripod and you really couldn't see what I did. Just right here, you got this clip right here. All you do is get underneath here like this and knock this, this uh, clip up. There we go. Good, it broke loose without twisting the brake line. Okay, brake holes disconnected from the axle the brake line and now we will remove the caliper a half inch wrench here oh haven't been off in a while okay got this re like a retaining piece here that holds it down and this right here is for the for the brake pads I always save all this because sometimes I like the factory stuff a lot better than I like the Aftermarket, I look and compare and decide. Okay, both those pieces are out. That means this should pop off like so. Oh boy, look at that. Just shredded, brake holes is just shot. Okay, that's why we're replacing it. Um, got a shoe that hung on there. Gotta take this cap here off. It's kind of just tap it using a hammer and a flathead screwdriver or however you however you choose to do it there we go got that snap ring plier there it is take it put it inside your little cup you took off out slides the out slides the gear that <clears throat> this gear is what turns the axle to your hub that turns your front tire we're going to clean all that stuff up this tool here this is something that people don't commonly have, but it's for a Dana 44 and it's got these four pegs and that's for the nuts. And here you got one that locks it. I'll show you that when it comes out here in a second. Come on, there we go. Let's see if we can get her now. Oh. Okay. This is what it looks like, full of grease. You can use a pick. I'm gonna use a magnet. I'm gonna try to get this washer out of here. Here, you got one of them. It's not really a washer, that's like a, a bushing. That just sits in there. And now you got this washer in between the two nuts. One nut locks the other nut. I just keep going back and forth like this. There we go. It's got a slot right here, like a keyway slot, and it slides on one way. And then when you tighten down your locking nut onto your adjusting nut, this this got a the adjusting nut's got a peg that goes through these little holes. Let's get this out of here. Yeah, see, I didn't have to break this loose. Normally, like all wheel bearings like this, they're not tight, but it's identical twin to the one we just pulled off of there. With this exception here let me get this off that's that notch right there won't let the washer turn and the washer won't let your adjusting nut turn because that hole is in one of these holes on the washer okay so with all that done we got a, a bearing right here okay that's your outer wheel bearing we're going to clean it up and you can clean it up in diesel fuel or gasoline, inspect it, repack it. And your whole hub assembly should come off right now, like that. All right. Okay, I'm just going to slightly go from side to side. Barely tap it and you'll hear it hit the ground like that. Um, Am I damaging the bearing by doing that? No, I'm barely tapping it, barely. And there it is. 
and here's your seal no damage to it here's the thing if you want to go further and you got a bad uh, CV joint knuckle whatever you want to call it universal joint you have to remove the spindle next spindle goes on just like this um, you have uh, a dust plate that after this is on there you got a dust plate that goes over top of it right here so you got six bolts 9 16 so loosen all six of those take your dust plate off this here is gonna fit snug inside here so what I did is I put a block of wood on this side tap it block of wood on this side tap it back forth back forth and it slowly wiggled its way off of there because this after being years inside here isn't just gonna fall right out for you that's a spindle if you had to replace a spindle that's what you're gonna replace my spindles good then the other thing I had to take off was this these are 7 8 bolts this holds your caliper on just like this okay so take those two off and then you can slide your axle right on out see and this is my bad knuckle Let's see if I can show it to you yeah you get a lot of popping and knocking and everything else with that so we just replace it okay just slid the shaft right in through there the long shaft went inside there um, you feel it when it locks up into the uh, differential and now I got to put my spindle on over here and uh, the only thing I, I made a mistake on is I put that little grease dirt on and it wouldn't go through this hole with that on so I just popped that off real quick and then put it back on there's a bearing in the back of this uh, spindle here so I sprayed it out with brake cleaner um, okay so here's my spindle and I'm putting it on there um, you just got to line up your bolt holes and I'm gonna push it on there um, and this is gonna need just a little bit of encouragement to get it inside there I barely barely had to had to tap it to get it out so I'm just gonna nudge that in there and get that up flush and I did clean both services uh, before I put it on there so okay I just barely tapped here here just around there just barely tapped on it be careful not to hit your threads okay then this goes on like that then you got washers and nuts all right so I'm just gonna put all these on and tighten them up all right uh, putting my brake caliper on now uh, the bracket that holds the brake caliper on um, for these you want to tighten them up like a tire kind of barely snug this one and then go over the opposite opposite side just keep going around like that because it'll finish seating itself in so now um, them are 9 16 and I got a 7 8 here in the back and I'm gonna drive just these two bolts that hold it in and that's it okay a little break in the weather so this is what I'm gonna do repack it put the new bearing in here put the seal in here like this tap it around the metal edge and repack uh, the front bearing you need to know how to pack a wheel bearing it is very important you just don't dip them in grease you actually got to pack them okay we're to this point um, the wheel bearings are packed uh, the inner one is in tap the seal in outer one is in now it's got to drive the the bolts or these locking nuts up here and remember this one here with the with the tab has to go in first and the tab out because this is going to hold that in place so what we're going to do is i'm just going to put this in okay and i'm just going to turn it in with the socket snug it up when i say snug it up maybe maybe 25 35 pounds of torque i'm not used to torque wrench i'm just going to go by hand just go tell it's snug see if this spins freely and then i'll back it off maybe just uh like this okay I want this to spin freely, just coast, yet I don't want slack in this, okay? So we'll see how it goes. This is a kind of a, a thing by feel. If you want more specific torque um, recommendations, you'll have to look it up in a Chrysler manual. Um, I've been doing stuff like this for a long time, so the feel just comes natural to me. But I just tight, snug it up, the front one, and just barely back it barely back it you want the spin free but you want this to be tight with no slack going in and out I'll put the washer on ok 
Okay, the washer will go next. And then this one here. This one here, I'm going to torque to 120 foot-pounds of torque. No matter what Haynes books or any other book tells you, I torque it at 120. Some people go 150 um, because these have been known. It's rare, but they have been known to work themselves loose. Okay. So I take a flashlight. I shine in there to make sure that that little peg is sticking through uh, one of the holes in that washer. You can see that it is. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, go up against that washer, and torque it to 120 pounds. Alright, so that's torqued. I'm just going to put the bushing in here, all the way in, and put a little bit of grease on the gears, and that'll go in like that. Snap ring goes in, cover goes on, okay? So pretty simple, straightforward. I put a little grease in the splines for here and for here on, on this actual gear here, okay? And when you go to put this in, there's a notch here, and some people might get confused, that's where the snap ring goes. It isn't, there's another notch in here. If you can't see it, this slides in and out, okay? So you can actually even push on the other side, you can grab a hold of the, the U-joint back here and see how it goes in and out. So you can push it in and out like that. And all you do, take your snap ring plier, put it on the inner one like that, and there. See, there's a little, just a little bit of slack there, and that's how it should be. A little bit of slack, and now when I turn this, it's turning the whole differential. See the drive shaft turn? Okay, caps back on. I just lightly tapped it around here until it goes all the way on. You can just tell when it quits going in, it's just up against a positive stop. So, okay, pads and uh, caliper now are next. Easiest way I know to do it take your pad. Obviously, your pad's got to be facing the rotor. Set the inside one like this. See how it fits on that slot? Top and bottom, it fits just like that. It's gonna be hard for me to do this with one hand. This right here sits up on both ends. See how that tab sits up there? Like that, and like that. And then, you just take it, try and do this with one hand, slip it on, like that. And it fits right up there, in that notch, in that notch. Okay, and you take these, and they hold them down. The only thing I noticed is that the, the bolts they give you, the washer, I know this from the other side, the washer is molded into the bolt. So when you go to tighten it down, it takes these tabs and wrecks them. So what I saved up here is the original bolt and the washer turns and it doesn't happen that way. So I'm gonna use the new uh, silver tins and stuff, but basically it just goes like this. Okay, this just goes up against there and holds it. This here with these little tabs go inside there. And I put a bolt in, that's it. All right, I'm gonna fasten okay. that up. So you have a brass washer underneath here, your brake holes, another brass washer, and the washers are like uh, gaskets almost, they, they seal so you don't leak brake fluid when you apply the brake, okay? All right, got to test drive them. I can tell a big difference big difference in the front end right now so all right so we like these improvements 